right, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about how I go about uh, telling a story when it comes to editing the pieces together. Um, we're going to look at a story I shot over the weekend. It's uh, about a DJ. He's actually my friend who's been a DJ for over 20 years and who's better yet to uh, find out about DJs than to actually sit down and interview one. So that's what I did this past weekend. His interview was around 30 minutes. I really wanted this to be around five minutes for the story. So um, I got a lot of information from Dan. He talked about a lot of important things and um, that's part of uh, a storyteller. You have to figure out what the story is and what you need to set aside and what you need to keep. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, how long his um, interview was. So this is his interview and you can see that there's several different cuts within it. Um, what I tend to do is I like to go ahead instead of writing the the old school way is writing down notes, what the time code is, and then you go back, and you cut it, and you add it. I don't do that. I've never done that. Um, I know they do that a lot. In other places, I set my video on the timeline. I listen to it. I cut the certain pieces out that I think are uh, relevant to the story, and I set them aside to the left. Keep doing that until I'm done with the whole interview. I listen to the whole thing again, and I start my in point and my out point. I cut, move it to the left. Um, that gives me a better idea of what's there. And from that point, I listen to the cuts that I made. So for this, there was um, about 18 minutes that I cut and put to the side. And from that point, you need to make sure that you Cut it even more and I call this murdering your own video because you're actually cutting stuff away and you want to make sure that you're having a story that is precise that it's not drifting in all different directions you want to make sure that um, your story is on point so in doing so you have to keep cutting even though the information is really cool it's really important you have to really remember what your story is about and what you want the audience to know about your story. So um, this was exceptionally hard because Dan was giving me a lot of information that was really cool, but you really need to sit back and just like think about, well, what do you want your story to, to be about? Um, and, and really focus it on that. So it took me a long time to edit that. And, before we go any further, I want to talk to you a little bit about A-roll and B-roll. What is A-roll? What is B-roll? You hear B-roll quite a bit, and B-roll is the video that sits on top of the audio. Um, A-roll is just the opposite. A-roll is anything that's audio related. So it could be an interview. It could be natural sound. Um, so that's what A-roll and B-roll is. Uh, you first lay down the A-roll, right? You lay it down. It tells a story and then you pick the video that best represents what's being said. So let me go ahead and um, play a little bit of this for you and you get a, a, a gist of what I'm talking about. Growing up in Oakland and spending time there, um, you know, uh, hip hop was all around us. It was like early, you know, mid eighties or whatever. And, you know, you just hear those sounds, you know, our neighbors used to blast like EPMD, Run DMC, Too Short. And those sounds just kind of like stayed with me. And as I kind of got older, I started getting more into hip hop and, and rap and, and just kind of, you know, it was like this golden era, right? We had Run DMC and they were wearing their Adidas. You had Jam Master J behind the turntables and it was just like this really amazing thing to me. My love for just hip hop grew from there. And then by the time I got into 10th grade, I said, oh, I, I, I want to DJ. I want to learn how to do that. And um, that's where my journey really started. Music to me is life. When I hear music, I, I don't, you know, you hear culture, you hear, you know, uh, uh, people's heritage and, and just kind of like a lot of emotion and, you know, and just kind of the sounds and, and, and the instruments and everything that is used. Um, I find it fascinating. As a DJ, you also listen for the beat and uh, the beat is always kind of like, how can I mix that? How would I mix that? Okay, so you get the gist of it. Um, 
I like to use a lot of natural sound. You can see that from the very beginning. I plugged my recorder into his soundboard or his uh, his DJ equipment to get that great sound uh, of him scratching on the record. Um, that's it's it's better to do that than to just get it from the speakers because this is a direct sound source and. Uh, it's the most cleanest. So I plugged in, got him uh, mixing a little bit, and I put that throughout the story to kind of break up the interview. It gives it a little bit more. It allows it to breathe more, and it also allows you to be kind of a part of what he does. So I tend to use a lot of that throughout all my videos, uh, throughout all my storytelling. Um, I think it just works well with my style. Um, so you can see that there is a ton of edits, right? There's a lot of A roll and B roll and, um, I wanted to start out with the obvious, you know, he's a DJ. So let's start off with some scratching. And in this piece, I, I used a couple different lenses, um, the first night uh, I went over there, I did not, um, he does streaming for, uh, for folks on Saturday nights. So he goes live and streams DJing. And I went with a 24 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and I brought a mini slider to get some moving shots. And then to, uh, on this particular day, the, on Sunday, I shot his interview with a 85 millimeter and then uh, the rest of the shots are with a 50 millimeter 1.4 and a 100 millimeter macro lens to get those really nice tight shots. And it's important to get a variety of shots, different angles, different focal lengths to help tell your story. Nothing's more boring than the same angle over and over and over and over and over. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to mix things up. And uh, so for lighting purposes, I used just one light. I had it to my far left in the corner for the B-roll to kind of give him that, um, that edge of light. And um, his, his, uh, the location was really, really small. It was a one car garage, so it was pretty narrow. So there wasn't much room. I didn't have much room to go around. Plus there was other stuff in the, in the um, in the garage so I tried my best to get the most um, cinematic lighting that I could and with his interview I uh, placed there's a, a key or a, a rim light to the right behind him and then there's a soft box to the left and um, originally there was just a plain white wall right here and I said, hey, Dan, do you have any type of lighting? Do you have any colored lights that you use for your DJ set to light up this area? And he said, yeah, yeah, I've got something. So we went ahead and did that. I said, anything's better than just a plain white wall. That just is so nasty. So we did that. And, um, and then I color graded this. Uh, the original would be like this. This is what it was, right? Let's get a different picture of him. That's what it looked like. Um, so then you start color grading it. And then I added some uh, different uh, shades of colors to kind of make it, I wanted that kind of moody look. So I went with the, a blue, dark, a blue within the black. And then I just use a mask to give it a more cinematic look. So that's, that's my way of doing uh, my stories. I, I interview, I ask all the questions that I possibly can think of that relate to the subject. Um, I write them down. I, I tend to write them down now um, just because I don't want to forget anything. I don't stare at them during the whole interview. They're just there just in case I need a uh, reference because you, you don't want to leave the interview and be like, damn, I should have asked that question. That question's the whole story. Um, so I tend to write them down and just briefly look at them once in a while just to make sure that um, that I've got everything that I need. Um, second, I uh, 
I just bring it home and I start working on it pretty much right away because I don't want any time to go by where I might have forgotten something. I, I want to be in that moment still and really get the audio that I want. And you can, another thing that I want to talk to you about is the music. I mean, this, this is a huge, uh, music is great for all videos, but this is specifically for this type of uh, video. It's um, a guy doing DJ work. And I didn't want to rely solely on the music that he's playing because that's copyright. So I downloaded some music from Soundstripe and I also use some of my own music. I produce music as well. So I found some music that I felt that would work for this piece and uh, use that. And I used, let's see how many pieces of music I used. A one, two, three, four, five, six. So six songs within a seven minute piece. I think it, it works well because it, it keeps you on your toes. It's not boring throughout the whole time. And then there are certain points where the music sounds a little bit different from the other points because of what he's talking about. He's talking about different things and you don't want anything hardcore when he's talking about something that's not hardcore. So uh, there's a moment here where he talks about Let's see. Let's see if I can get it about him streaming. So here, the the music starts changing right here. With this whole pandemic, I mean, it's definitely been very hard on DJs. You know, there's still an appetite from people that they want to hear good music. They want to hear, um, you know, uh, DJs rock. And so. Uh, for a while, especially like in February, March of this year, it was just kind of weird because there was none of that going on. And so then you start seeing like DJs get, a, get on Facebook and Twitch and Instagram and start streaming. And so I started seeing that and I was like, man, that's that. So you get the idea. It's uh, a different vibe. So I chose to use a different type of song for that. Um, yeah, so choose your B-roll wisely shoot a lot of it so that you can use it not only to tell the story better but then to also cover up any uh, mistakes the uh, person who is being interviewed creates uh, there's a lot of times where people pause or they stumble or you want to um, kind of change up how they say things um, to make it more condensed so those are great ways to just fix audio without people knowing what actually is going on so that it looks more professional and um, the person you interview is going to appreciate it more too because you make them sound better than the actual day it was recorded. Um, they're nervous. A lot of these people don't get in front of the camera and uh, so they're nervous. There's lights. There's cameras, there's microphones hanging from above them, so they're nervous, and that's to be expected. Um, so you want to make them look as, make them look and sound as good as possible. So that is another reason why you want to shoot a lot of B-roll, so you can cover up those types of mistakes if they do make any mistakes. I think this is what I wanted to uh, mention regarding how I start my story. So um, I will go ahead and upload this and I will have a link in the description so that you can actually see the full story on uh, Dan, uh, DJ D Real. And uh, it's, a, it's really interesting to uh, hear him talk about his life as a DJ, and where he could have gone. Um, that's another point. Um, that I'll probably talk about some some other time where you need to create conflict within stories. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and have a blessed day. Thank you.